Hi everybody. Hi. How are we? Thank you very much for coming. Oh sorry, yes, Joey's gonna start. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, so hello everyone, many friends in the room. So really good to see you and to welcome you to New South Wales Parliament. Um, as all of you know, uh, we have a very strong relationship with the Chinese Australian community. I see many of you at many of the events I attend. And you know in particular the significance of the communities that all of us represent, including Chris and I in Cogra and in, uh, in Burwood. Today is an opportunity for you to uh, meet our new leader of the Labor Party, Michael Daly, and also to ask questions of us as a Labor Party uh, in terms of our priorities for the Chinese Australian community. Um, Michael's going to speak through this further. Um, I do want to introduce my colleague. So Alan is standing as the candidate for Epping. You know this amazing man, of course. Everybody knows Ernest, our dear friend Ernest. Um, we've got Steve, who's the member for Rockdale. Of course, Chris, who's the member for Cogra. Uh, Joe, who's the member for Sun Hill, and Lucy, who's standing as the candidate for Oatley. Now, all of us either represent or seek to represent a Chinese Australian community. Um, as you know, there are more than uh, half a million Chinese Australians living in New South Wales. I think all of you know the commitment that I have to the community. And so it is important for us at the end of the first week of Michael as leader of the Labour Party here in New South Wales, that the first media conference we have is with the Chinese Australian community. So I want to introduce to you Michael Daly, uh, leader of the opposition, leader of the Labour Party, and of course the member for Maroubra. Well, thank you very much, Jody, and thank you all for coming today. Yes, as Jody said, this has been a week of firsts for me, having been <coughs> on, on Saturday. And so as we got the team together and assembled and mapped out a plan for the week, we said we've got to call in some ethnic communities to talk to them. And I said, uh, let's make sure the Chinese community are the first. So the Chinese community are the first <coughs> ones to come and meet me as new leader of the Labor Party and Thank you very much for that. I, um, I, as Jody said, I'm the member for Maroubra. I took over from Bob Carr in 2005, and I have to send a message to Bob from all of you. He said in his usual way, tell my Chinese friends I said hello. <coughs> so, hello from Bob. <laughs> and when I was elected as member for Maroubra in 2005, the Chinese community made up about 1.8% of, of my electorate. It's now 12 and continuing to increase. And thank you for that. You've made our, our area a, a better home. It's a more vibrant place. And so it's very fitting that you're the first community to come and visit us this week in my first week of leadership. You know, we talk about ethnic communities, the Chinese community, the Arabic community, the Turkish community, but there's really just one community. There's just us. And we're all living together <coughs> in Sydney. I think what is the best city in the world. And we all want the same thing for each other. We want a world-class education system. You know, probably better than anyone, having having uh, having practiced for not centuries but millennia, the mantra that the best way to improve oneself is through education. You know, better than anyone, the strength of an education for your for your children, and 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 so we intend, as a Labor government in March, to make sure that you and your children get the best education system in the world. Of course. You all know as well that a health system is vital, particularly to our older people. It's not just about, uh, about keeping people living a long time and having long and healthy lives. It's also about that dignity of, of, of the older years. So we will continue to deliver on health and education, which have been traditionally two very strong points for the Labor Party. We will fight the election on those two battlegrounds because they are two areas of public policy that have been neglected by the Egyptian government. And of course, transport. And we made a great announcement this week that yes. uh, Jody worked up, which I'm sure you saw, but if you haven't, I'll just give you a very quick summary. All school children will have free travel on all modes of public transport on the Opal system, no matter where you live, what time of day you're travelling, or where you're going. And that's something we're very proud of, an early announcement on transport from the, the prospective daily government. I just want to thank these MPs here. They're always coming in my office when I was a deputy leader and I'm sure they'll drive me more crazy now. 
advocating for the needs and wants of the Chinese community. But before I close, I just want to pay tribute to Ernest Wong. Ernest has been an outstanding member of this place. We're sad to see him go. Politics can be a brutal game sometimes, but I spoke to Ernest this week and I said to Ernest, we'll have to make sure, we'll work together to make sure you are not lost to public life in New South Wales, and we're determined to make sure he plays a very prominent role for, uh, for the people yeah. of New South Wales. Yeah. <laughs> I also say on behalf of my entire team, but particularly on behalf of the MPs that are assembled here, we make this solemn commitment to you. No matter what happens in the campaign in the next 129 days, under no circumstances whatsoever will we deal in any way whatsoever with One Nation. So thank you very much for being here. I'll ask Chris Minns, a member for Cobra, to say a few words. Thanks, Michael. Um, look, I think uh, the Chinese-Australian community, which is distributed throughout the Sydney area, is notoriously, and uh, I think in a positive way, uh, a swing community. Sometimes they vote Labor, and sometimes they vote for the Coalition. And I think that's a positive thing, because it means that the, that community <coughs> really does drive both political parties to have the best policies for them, for their communities, for their families. And under a daily-led Labor government, we will fight for every single Chinese-Australian vote. We will, we will go to the next election with fantastic public transport, public education and public <coughs> health care policies. And we will make sure that the Chinese-Australian community know that Labor stands for these important public services. And at the end of the day, after eight years of a coalition government where every single one of those important public services have been run down, it's time for a Labor government to ensure that those that pay taxes and the Chinese Australian communities who are entrepreneurial, who work incredibly hard, pay an enormous amount of money to the New South Wales Treasury, deserve decent public services and they're only going to get it under a daily-led Labor government. And I'll say this about our leader, our parliamentary leader. It's not easy to be pro-multiculturalism. It's not easy to stand up for the Chinese community, particularly when you've got a leader like Paul N. Hansen who's running around desperately demonising members of the Chinese community and trying to split Australians up. But our leader, Michael Daly, has pledged that we will not deal with one nation and we will never, ever countenance racism. That's what true multiculturalism is all about. That's what standing up for communities like the Chinese Australian community is all about. It takes guts and a little bit of courage, and that's what we will present to the people of New South Wales, and in particular, the Chinese Australian community at the upcoming election. I have questions. Have you questions? Thank you very much for the speech. Um, um, so I want to know, so um, uh, under your relationship, uh, re uh, leadership, how is it going to differ from the career? Leadership. That's my first question. The second question would be how will you handle the question about uh, Chinese investment and foreign interviews, which is what, what the younger Chinese generation were concerned about? Sure. Um, look, I had my, the story that I bring to public life is a little bit different from a lot of other uh, members of parliament that find their way in here. Um, I'm not a career politician. I, I came into public life, I didn't join the Labour Party until 27. I was a customs officer, I studied law at night, I paid my way through law school. So I know too what it's like to use education to rise up and make yourself better. Uh, I, I went to work for a law firm and I knew I had a, a weakness in business. I knew I had, if I wanted to be standing here and doing what I'm doing now, I knew I had to educate myself up in business. So I asked the son of former Go Prime Minister Gough Whitlam, Nicholas Whitlam, if he would employ me as an in-house lawyer in his company, the NRMA. He was the chairman of the NRMA, and he did. Uh, and I learned in those five years more in that five-year period than in any other five-year period in my life about business, and corporate governance, and, in, and investment, and all of those things that, uh, um, that are important and vital for an understanding of treasury and economics. So that's, that's been my grounding. And then when I um, made it into Parliament, I remember the words of Paul Keating who said, you can't understand government unless you understand the numbers. You can't get an understanding of service delivery and performance unless you understand the budget. 
So I've asked the Premier when I was brand new in here, he made me a junior minister after two, and, after two years in here, um, if he could put me on all the economic committees and make me a junior minister to the Treasury. Um, and I, then when I became a minister, I was a minister for roads with a $4.4 billion spending portfolio, a minister for police, and I asked to, to be put on the important economic subcommittees of budget, the expenditure review committee, the Budget Subcommittee of Cabinet. And when the, when the GFC hit, we made some very good decisions to keep spending and investing in public services and public works so that Australia didn't go into recession. So I, I, I've been attracted to the economic portfolios from the day I arrived in here. My undertaking is that we'll continue to be um, as economically responsible as we've always been. And Bob Carr and Michael Egan, 15, surpluses in 16 years we will continue that, that economic uh, that economic policy in a daily government. Now in relation to the second question you asked, I have long thought that too many people in the New South Wales Parliament misuse their position to bring foreign affairs into this parliament for political purposes. Um, I've always thought that foreign affairs should be dealt with in the federal parliament and this parliament should be used to continue to strengthen its service delivery on health and education and all of the things that are our constitutional responsibilities. I criticised premiers of the past for talking about things on the floor of parliament which I thought shouldn't have been there because they were using foreign affairs to divide people. And that's still my view. Foreign affairs should be the province of the federal parliament, not the state parliament. I think it's um, from People's Daily Online, and my first question is, this year commemorates the 200 year of Chinese migration to Australia. So what do you think the Chinese immigrants has contributed to the development of Australia? And my second question is, as a multicultural country, uh, what do you think the role the Chinese immigrants play in the Australia's multiculturalism? Thank you. I think, I, I think that they contribute just a sense of genuineness. When I'm in the midst of Chinese people, they don't try and be something they're not. They're genuine, they're warm, what you see is what you get. And that's the basis for friendship. They're the people I like most. You don't have to second guess them, you know you can trust them. That's the biggest contribution the Chinese people have made to Australia, just by being yourselves. A great sense of energy, entrepreneurship, as Chris said, the great business people, taught us many lessons in business over the years, have lifted the spirit of this nation. And this is just the beginning. It's a young country. 200 years is nothing, particularly given the ancient history of China and the civilization that you've held up as an example to all humanity for thousands and thousands of years. But I could speak all day about that, but thanks for the question. Uh, from Australia, I mean, uh, just that uh, Victoria has uh, signed out a MOU with the uh, Chinese government in terms of the One Bill, One Road uh, mm -hmm. initiative. If you were the Premier, are you going to follow suit? Look, um, you don't need to sign an MOU to have a really strong relationship um, and, a, and a foster cross-investment. Uh, but if, if I'm elected in March, no doubt you'll be knocking on my doors for me to follow suit, and I look forward to that visit. But you don't need an MOU to do that. We've had the bilateral investment between the states and China, the states of, of, of Australia and China, and the nation of Australia and China without an MOU. I can't see where that won't continue, but I suspect you might be knocking on my door next March if I'm elected to try and put forward another view, and we'll have a chat about that then. But I'm open to all discussions. I won't shut the door, but what I won't do is use uh, international relations in this parliament as a political tool, because some premiers in the past have, and I think that's demeaning to the multicultural communities of Australia. You just want to be treated like everybody else. Great. Do, you, do we need anything else? Any photos? Can I get a photo? Like that? Oh, sorry, no, no, no. Ernest. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Can you introduce your new uh, shadow minister team, please? Sorry? New shadow minister team. Do you? That, it's, the same, it's the same team. Oh, uh, same team. Uh, okay. At the moment, um, I, haven't even had to, I haven't got my feet under there yet. I'm, I'm eating, I'm, I'm on the phone at 11 o'clock at night and eating dinner at 11 o'clock at night while I'm on the phone. Um, we're putting our team together in terms of staff and when we get the office up and running, then I'll think about that, but it'll be a very small variation. Look, I learned early on as a minister 
um, because I was reshuffled. Every time you reshuffle people, they stop because they have to pause and learn about their new portfolio. And we have 129 days left of the election, so we don't have time to stop. So it'd be minimal because there are a couple of vacancies, um, but I want, look, we're sprinting at the moment. We are on the road at pace, and I want us to continue to stay at pace. Ernest, Thank do you. us the honour of concluding. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I was about to say I'm really excited, um, uh, honoured to be here to stand by our new leader, Michael, um, uh, Michael Daly, and with all the other MPs where they have been working very uh, hard and have been always very close to the community that they represent. Um, not only that they're working very hard, but one thing that I can assure you, and that's why I've been with Labour Party all these years, and I'm so proud to be with Labour Party, is because all of them will have multiculturalism close to their heart. They understand how we have, we will be able to have our social equality, how we're going to have the acceptance of cultural diversity. And that's what Labour is always for. And that is what Labour is going to, to, to take it to the next election and also after the next election. So that's why I'm uh, proud to be here to, uh, to be with the whole team to make sure that next year in the election in March that we'll be able to get the support from all the communities, particularly the Chinese community, where we have all been working very closely with. Um, on the other hand, I also would like to, uh, uh, to probably to assure one thing, that not only Michael's door is always open, I think all the MPs' door is always open, yeah, sure. and you can always knock at the door and ask for any questions that you want to know, and also to take what your concern will be to all of us that we'll be able to help you out. Um, I, I would like to wrap up a bit in Chinese because I think probably that would be a lot easier for some of them to understand. Yeah. yeah so what we what we all about. Ah, 那么今天非常高兴呢，在这里呢来介绍我们新的啊我们的领袖啊 Michael Daly。其实 Michael 我跟他呢认识很多年了。那么他呢其实做过很多不同类型的呃我们的部长，在我们攻打执政的时候，所以他对很多的不同的。Uh, Zheng Shen is very, very, very associated. I'm telling them that Michael has been actually minister for a I member mean, of all levels uh, when, when the time when Labour was actually in government. So, uh, so he has been very, 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 所有的儿童都不需要再交任何的交通费用，不论是是上学的还是还是在平常的时间，这只是第一个我们的政策。以后呢，我们会有更多的政策呢，为大家推出来。所以大家如果有需要的话，可以跟他们不同的几个议员呢，跟他们去去咨询。也希望大家呢，呃，可以呢，呃，更多的去反映，呃，在这方面的，尤其是华人社团的一些意见，让我们更了解华人社团的一些感觉。那么也希望呢，大家呢，在呃以后的日子里面呢，有更多的合作，也希望大家继续支持我们工厂。谢谢 ，Thank you。